On this episode of the John 1911 Podcast, the 600-yard rifle range is open. The NFL has a baby millionaire problem. Totally cleaning house at a firearms auction and a donkey painted like a zebra. Okay, good morning everybody. This is Mark and this is episode 193 of the John 1911 Podcast. How's it going, Freeze? Uh, pretty good, but you just said 193. Did I say 193? You yeah, know what? You Hold on. Let me just, I'll just edit this out. Ready? Three, <laughs> two, one. Good morning. You know what? Screw that. I'm leaving it in. It's episode <laughs> 103. <laughs> hey, you know what? You said you were ready and we were ready to hit record and all of a sudden your phone started blowing up, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm drinking coffee. This is America. <laughs> Trump's president. I don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, no doubt. Life is good. Oh, my God. There's so much going on. Life is good. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Um, there's so much we haven't talked about uh, that we were going to talk about. But, dude, uh, did, uh, cause since we were just talking about a second, did you see the picture of the Z- of the zebra yet? No. Click um, that link. So here, while, while Freeze is clicking the link, we're, before we get into the heavy stuff, there's a story out of, um, there's a story out of, well, I'm, I'm getting it out of, a, out of a newspaper out of India, and they're reporting it as happening in Egypt. But there's a, in an Egyptian zoo, they have a donkey, and they apparently spray painted this donkey to look like a zebra. And there's photographs, and... This it's a donkey. That's awesome. <laughs> it looks just like it looks like Cracker Jack. And here's the sad part. I mean, you know, I guess the stripes aren't that bad, but man, they had to lay down a base coat. <laughs> like the donkey's <laughs> white. <laughs> yeah. You see the pictures? That's awesome. That, you know what that's called? Halloween that's at called, your house? Yeah. No, yeah, that's called adapt, improvise, and overcome. <laughs> <laughs> you need a zebra for your zoo and you got a donkey? Well, you know. Yeah, I think part of it is it looks like it's like the petting part of the zoo because like the donkey can reach over the gate and you can feed it feed it carrots and stuff. It'll bite. I mean, here's the thing. I, hey, pro tip from Freeze's Farm: donkeys will bite your ass. Oh, in a heartbeat. Oh yeah. You know, let, I mean, let me tell you something about donkeys. Donkeys are very intelligent, and a donkey, if you piss him off, he'll wait twenty years to kick your brains out. Yeah. They have a long memory. <laughs> so, hey, um, you're, you, this are your grandkids in the background. I want to ask yeah, yeah. a question. They're playing video games. Yeah. There's, I've been reading online about some video game called Fortnite. Do they play that game? It's a shoot, em, have, shoot em up game? I have no clue. I don't know what they play. I don't even know how to turn. They've got an Xbox. I don't even know how to turn it on. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I bought it. I bought controllers. I bought headphones. I bought everything they need to do, and they and they're entertained. And I have no free. The only thing I know how to do is hit the input button on the TV to get it to the Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm dead serious. I don't play video games. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't have time for childish nonsense. Now, I don't want to offend anyone that plays video games. I know there's a lot of people that do, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with video games. I just don't have time for it. I've got other things I have to do. Yeah. You know, but hey, the kids like it, and that's fantastic. Oh, I, I played video games as a kid. I'm sure you did, too. I mean... Uh, no, I, the, the, we had ColecoVision hey, and the Atari 2600. We had that the, was it. Yeah, we had the Atari 2600, ColecoVision. There was Coleco, which was kind of the ghetto one. And then what? what was the one, the real fancy one that people would get? I have no Coleco. clue. Twenty six hundred to Coleco, and it was um, there was another one. I don't know. I can't I, remember. I, I, again, uh, the the last video game system that I remember as a kid was the Atari twenty six hundred. I used uh, to like play tank. Oh, uh, dude, I knew <laughs> these. Uh, I knew these guys growing up. They're uh, they uh, they were like the smart people, <laughs> and uh, they were the smart family. And, uh, like, they were all engineers. And they had this system. I don't know where they got this or they built it, but it was a, you know, 2600 took the cartridges, and you put the cartridges into the 2600, and um, you flipped it on. It's got, like, the three or six switches. 
They yeah. had a tape deck that had an adapter that plugged into the 2600, and you could tape load games into into the 2600 off of, off of like a digital tape. And they were they yeah. were these. They, I don't think they were Atari games, but they were. It was it was interesting because I think the tapes held more data than the cartridges, so it was better games. And you yeah. know that was my first, I guess, you know, exposure to like the. The hacker community, hacker culture, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, I guess. You didn't have that? You guys didn't have the, the tape deck? No. No. Well, you're going to be you're gonna be too busy because I got a couple projects for you. One of them yeah. you haven't even heard of yet. You think you have, but this is, no, this one's coming at you. This one's coming at you sideways. Do you remember okay. the Bernadelli pistol? Ah, uh, the Bernadelli pistol. No, you haven't seen it, but it came into the armory. Uh, uh, no, I look so much stuff has come into the armory yeah. over the past couple of months. I can't keep track of it all. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's been like three guns have come into the army in the past two days. Um, so anyway, Bernadelli pistol. It's a it's a P one nine millimeter. It's a Italian made gun. I think Bernadelli went out of business, and uh, or they've suspended operations voluntarily with the op- with the option to restart at some point yet to be determined. Which to me sounds like they're out of business. But um, <laughs> uh, they sold guns to Israel to the PDs in Israel, and uh, finally these PDs have have, uh, have uh, surplus them out, and they, some of them came to the U.S. and we grabbed one. Okay. It's a nine millimeter gun. You're gonna like this gun. It's a DASA gun, uh, but you can run it cocked and locked like a 1911. It's a neat gun. And I'll tell you what, the action on it. We actually have a, uh, we have a secondhand showcase on one I, on on it. I think so. Anyway, we had a guy reach out. And he was like, "Hey, I've owned one of these in 40 caliber for years. It's a really sweet shooting gun, but I've never been able to take it apart to clean it. Could you make a video?" <laughs> So I was like, all right, so over the weekend, one of the projects I did is I was like, let me figure out how to break this gun down. And there is a trick to it, and I was able to get the gun apart. And let me, dude, <laughs> the inside of this gun is roached. It is <laughs> freaking awful. Really? It's got, it's got, I would say it's got a, 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 a preservative in it. That's been in it so long that the water has separated from the oil, and then that is now rusted. It's, uh, it's. I mean, it's fully functional, but, you know, it's one of those things where if the corrosion starts, it continues until you stop it. And if we don't stop this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt the gun. Okay. Okay. Well, that that's an easy enough project. Yeah. So, I mean, it has to be... Either put into a sonic tank or you know hit with some steel wool. I mean, there's there's stuff all over. And here's the thing too: it's got a few parts on it. There's a, uh, I'll try to do a video on it this week. There's a there's this customs little little like, uh, I, I I wouldn't call it a flat wire spring. It's kind of like a paper clip spring, and it's it sits it sits where the slide stop is. And it's like if that thing ever breaks, we are fucked ever getting that replaced. When you see that spring, you're going to be like, oh, my God. <laughs> it, like, hangs out the side of the gun. It's ter- It's terrible. Terrible. So, yeah, you have a, you have a project coming with the uh, with a Bernadelli. Okay. Um, and how, hey, how, if, you ever, if you want to search for it, how you, like, if you're like, what the hell is a P1? When you're searching for it, just type in Bernard Ellie, and then that's how you know how to spell it. It's <laughs> Bernard E L L I. That's how I remember how to do it. So okay. <laughs> um, do you remember the we were talking about duck boats, and then there's you know been all the duck boat stuff in the news. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> do you think they're gonna? Do you? I mean, it's sad. <clears throat> it's it's sad. Do you think they're going to start banning duck boats? No, I don't think they will. You th- I mean, you, well, okay, do you think the market may turn against duck boats? No. No, there's always going to be someone who wants to take a, buck, a duck boat tour. Well, here, well, I mean, I'm bringing it up to bring this up. Because, dude, you've been talking about ducks for as long as I've known you. You talk oh, about Willie's Jeeps, duck boats, and deuce and a half. 
Yeah. That's basically, you know, I mean, you talk about half tracks and Sherman tanks, but fuck you, I ain't buying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious if the duck boat market might get real soft and it might, you know, I mean, we could maybe buy duck boats for nothing. <sighs> Well, there's not a whole hell of a lot of them around. I do know a guy that owns one, though. Oh, yeah? It's not, I mean, you know, you would. it won't float. You drive it right into the water, and it'll go straight <laughs> to the bottom because it's got big holes in the side of it. So it's a duck, not boat. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was at one point in time, you know, but it's just sitting on its farm rotting. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't. But I mean, you know, but the problem is there's there's just not that many of them around. Yeah, I didn't realize this because they were I don't know if it was because there's the story of whatever happened at Branson, Missouri. And you know, it looks bad. And some guy. W so they had some guy on TV and I guess he had inspected the duck boats uh, for a possible acquisition. They were thinking about buying the company. Some entertainment company was, you know, hey, let's. We're thinking about buying this duck boat ride company because it kind of fits in our portfolio. So they sent a dude out to look at them. Yeah. And it was interesting because he came away with a couple of points. And I guess he decided it was like, uh, you shouldn't buy these. The first thing he said was the canopy that they put on the duck boats for the civilian duck boat rides. Because, you know, if you're riding around, I mean, you're in the water. You're always exposed to the sun. You're going to roast. Yeah. And so they put a canopy on top of them to, you know, shield people out of the sun so they can go on an hour long duck boat ride. Well, uh -huh. the problem is if the boat gets swamped and starts to go down, that canopy turns into a death trap because it wasn't designed for that canopy. It was designed to ferry people, you know, back and forth from ship to shore in like five or 10 minute, 20 minute intervals. And, you know, people could bail out of it very easily. And so that was kind of an interesting point that they were saying about the duck boats. And then the second thing the guy said, and I, I assume it's for all the duck boats, and I wanted to ask you. He said that the ones he looked at, the motor that runs the engine or the, or the, the, motor, the motor that runs the entire unit also runs the pumps. And the way he was describing it, Basically, a duck boat won't float if the pumps aren't running. Is that true? Well, no, no. Here's here's the problem. <clears throat> It'll float, but the problem is <clears throat> they uh, they leak. Um, so the bilge pumps have to be running constantly to keep the water out because, you know, again, if you get too much water in the bilge, then it will sink. You know, it'll founder. So basically, you just said yes. It it, it won't it it will it, it won't float unless the motors are running. Well, I mean, it'll float for a while. Okay. <laughs> you know, because I didn't know if it was like a if that would be a neat trick on how they would do that. But I mean, you know, if it was truly a you know sealed boat system, but apparently they're not. They run on bilge pumps. And here, and what the guy said was. Maybe it's because the duck boats, when they're loaded heavily, or maybe they've changed them to make them into civilian, you know, leisure craft. They sit so low in the water. If the water starts topping over the boat, it runs down to where the motor is, shorts the motor out, and the duck boat's dead in the water. And guess what happens? It starts to sink very yeah. quickly. And it's just like, you know, the guy was like, this is not a good investment. We're not buying these. It's like, these things are death traps. And I was like, holy shit. You know, I've ridden in a duck boat, and uh, you know they're they're okay. I don't think people realize the, how big duck boats are until you see one. They're like well, a, they're like a city bus. They're huge. Well, I mean, a duck boat is basically just a boat slapped on a deuce and a half chassis. That's what a duck boat is. Okay. They they took a deuce and a half and made it into a boat. <laughs> 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 Isn't yeah. it how they made a, a half track too? Isn't a half track? Yeah, a deuce and yeah. A half? Basically, yeah. A half track is just deuce and a half with uh, tracks on the back. Yeah. The uh, did I tell you about the bulldozer guys on the farm that they were using deuce and a halves as their support vehicles? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if we ever talked about this on pod. So, you know. If you have a giant D8 dozer that weighs 50 tons and you're on a big site, 
you don't always run the dozer back to home base to do hmm. stuff because it you know that puts time on the motor and it burns gas and if you've got to go a thousand yards <laughs> you know uh so they use deuce and a halves as admin vehicles they have they use one for tools and and commuting and they have another one for fuel and i you know our property the this new range is it's pretty tough property. I mean, it's, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it rolls and it's got some deep bottoms in it. And I actually was shocked to find a deuce and a half back in there hidden in the woods. <laughs> and then, then the guy, the boss, he's running, he's running up, dude, that deuce and a half will go anywhere a four wheeler would go. I couldn't believe it. I was impressed as hell. Well, you know, I mean, they were designed for that. I just never thought about it. I just, I never thought about them actually being, you know, like off-road capable. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I, mean, just, hey. I, I just never thought about it. Yeah. I mean, when I say off-road capable, I mean like really off-road capable. Like, this ain't no joke. Like, it's muddy. It's a muddy mess, and you've got these huge hills with these big washout bottoms and the, you know, like you couldn't get a, you get a truck down there, you're not going to get. There's most, most standard street trucks would never even get out of the bottoms of those. Deuce and a half is no problem. I was like, yep. wow. I mean, like you could go off roading in a deuce and a half. It just never occurred to me that it's like a six wheeled jeep or like a six wheeled sport utility vehicle. Is it six? Yeah, one. Yeah, is it six? Yeah, six. Right? Yeah, deuce and a half is yeah. six. Um, but uh. Yeah. At one point, uh, I had had, because we have multiple vehicles on the property, and he comes up to me, and I had an air pump out, because we have one of the four-wheelers has a slow leak in the tire. And uh, he's like, you need a, you need some air? I'm like, yeah, I, I said I got a little a little pump here that we plug into the cigarette lighter, and it'll it'll slowly do it. He's like, I, uh, I, can, I, can, I can top you off. And I'm like, hmm. you got an air pump? He's like... I didn't see an air pump. And he goes, he goes, no, it's built into the deuce and a half. Hmm. I was like, holy shit, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, this thing goes off-road, carries a ton of weight, diesel-powered, and has built into it an air an air compressor somewhere in it. Yeah. Hooked, hooked, I was like, you, wow. I was like, that is impressive as hell. <laughs> I just was shocked. And then I said, does it have a... Um, I said, does it have a uh, a pressure gauge on? He goes, nope, you just stop filling when you think you're full. And I'm like, nope, we're not doing that. That thing will blow out the tires on this four-wheeler in about two seconds. Pop it like a balloon. Well, you know, um, uh, it serves its purpose if you have a flat, you know. Yeah, or, you know, if you, you're in a tough spot, you want to let air, let air out or, or put air into it, you're, it's no big deal. Cause you well, just... and, and that's the whole idea of having a, uh, a pump on the, the deuce and a half. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know, if you're in a real muddy, swampy area, you have to let air out of the tires to get traction, you know. Or clearance. I just never realized that every deuce and a half had a air compressor built into it. <laughs> I, I just was, I was, I was, I... You know, I look a deuce and a half. So I'm like, eh, I don't know. Okay, I mean they're fine. They're not that much money. And you've been talking to me about them for years, and you occasionally you'll be like, hey man, we could get this for a good price, and you'll send over <laughs> some. And now, I mean, I'm like, I have a whole new respect for a deuce and a half. Yeah, well, you know. What can I, mean, I say? I mean, it might. It, I mean, I can't. If one falls in our lap at a good price, I mean, it might. Just... Oh, hell, hell's bells! I had been sending you links for deuce and a halves at a good price for years. <laughs> I know, and I knew that this was that was that was going to happen in this conversation. At one point, you'd be like, "Well, what the fuck?" <laughs> I've been telling you this, so yeah, I was just like. Dude, I was impressed as impressed as hell. I mean, this thing, and this just from a just from a pure, <clears throat> you know, accessibility standpoint, on our farm, this range, I'm gonna call it a farm. It's a range. You know, if someone said, "Hey, you got two choices. Do you want this Jeep, 
or do you want this deuce and a half? I literally would be like, all things being equal, I'll take the deuce and a half. Oh yeah, I and I never would. I would have thought a jeep would have been more practical. Well, no, no, I mean, okay, look, I'm not saying the jeep wouldn't be practical, but I mean, you know, all things being equal, the deuce and a half is much more practical for uh, for our purposes. Yeah, yeah, especially for you know, I mean, so, but you know, the thing is, we got this contractor, and he's got multiple deuce and a halves. He's got a. I want to run this one by you because he's got a crane. Yeah. I'm think I, I I'm not I'm not committing to it because we still have to have some meetings. Actually, I got to work on today with the shipping container. I'm considering stacking a shipping container with a smaller one on top of it. Uh, I don't really. I mean, we've talked about that a uh, little in the past, and mm-hmm. I don't see where that's a bad idea. I mean, I really don't. I mean, it, it gives us a twenty plus foot shooting tower right off the bat. You know, plus, um, there's, it's not like it's a wasted container. Cut a door into the damn side of it, and, you know, with the stairwell, you still have, you know, the storage container, uh, you know, storage as well. So, I mean, it can still be useful. Yeah, I just have to, um, I have to, I'm going to have to, because I've determined we definitely need it, we need to go up the chute at the eight, eight, eight hundred, eight fifty, nine hundred 850, 900 yard impact zones we have i don't i'm tired of pushing through hills at this point um i don't want to push through another hill i'd rather go up and shoot down and so i, I have disagree. to i have to compare the price of building a tower like a zipline tower but like a, a bigger one versus a shipping container and what i hate about the shipping containers is the small the shipping container gets the worse the price is yeah and I, th- I, I hate because there's yeah, it's economics because there's just not that many of them. And yeah. that's, they go up. I mean, you pay more <laughs> for a 20 foot shipping container than you do for a 40 or yeah. the same amount. It's like, well, damn, you know, I don't want to stack two of them. I don't want to stack two 40s. No, no. And I don't, I, but look, here's the thing. If you stack them, put a stairwell to the top of the first one. Um, that gives you access to the doors. I mean, you can cut shooting slots, windows, you can, you know, so you have that level and then, you know, another stairwell above it. And I mean, you can get, you know, put a deck on top of that. I mean, you can have multiple levels, uh, to shoot from. I mean, you know, it gives you a lot of options. I'm considering it because with this contractor, getting a crane onto the range isn't going to be that big of a deal. Because when I was talking to the shipping container people, a crane from them seemed like freaking brain surgery. They were like, okay, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we could probably arrange something. And of course, you know, considering where the range is compared to where they're at, I'm like, I just kind of let it go. I'm like, this will solve itself because I'm like, this is, they're just going to be retarded on price. Yeah. Well, and the contractor's right down the road. So it's not going to, like, it's not going to be a major job to get a train, uh, the, the crane up there. Whereas yeah. the shipping container people, they'd have to drag that crane. I mean, who the hell knows what the cost of that's going to be? Oh, did you, did you see the road when they, <laughs> they, cause they brought in, Ah, eh, what the hell? No one knows. They brought in the D8 on a low boy, <laughs> and they didn't want to uh, try to drag it, like, crossing off the road onto our property. So without permission, they closed the road in front of our range for 20 minutes to unload the D8s. <laughs> and if you look at the road, there's damage to the road. <laughs> and it's just like... Oh, shit. I'm like, ah, you know. And I noticed, too, uh, the day intentionally, the D8, they intentionally hide it (laughs) when they're (laughs) done working. And I'm starting to be like, we're kind of ghettoing this, aren't we? (laughs) I mean, it's almost like they're always, like, hiding the D8. I'm like, you know, I I mean, I hate to tell them this, but I'm like, guys. You realize that anybody with access to satellite photograph data is going to be able to see this work. It's going to be real obvious. You know, you can't, you know, you can see some of it from the road, but anyone from the air, it's going to be like, holy shit. So ah, cross that boat when <laughs> yeah, we'll cross that bridge, cross that river when we get to it, cross that bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, 
hey, um, I sent you, I sent you an article on a, um, and I'm not quite sure what's up with it. The B A the ATF. I hate saying B A T F E. The ATF is looking to reclassify or possibly classify um, 50 caliber AR uppers as firearms. You know, I, I read that article, and it, here's the weird thing about that to me. I mean, on one hand, it makes sense. I mean, it, it really does be in a bolt action upper. If it's operated as a bolt action, yes. Yes, but on the other hand, dude, whoever tried to import these and and basically red flag the ATF, I mean, really did everyone a disservice because the truth is they're walking down a real freaking slippery slope and with their logic and again you know the whole bolt action upper i mean it makes sense from an atf standpoint for bolt action rifles but on the other hand man it's only a hop skipping away from making all ar uppers into quote unquote firearms it's <clears throat> Here's here. If someone has listened to this, maybe they didn't catch the really important part. What this is, I don't even know where these came from, but there's some there. You see these a lot in, in England. Um, you'll see AR-15 rifles because semi-automatics are, I don't know exactly the rules over there, but they're either highly controlled or flat out restricted. So they cycle them manually as like straight pulls or as bolt action rifles. Well, I don't know where these came from, these 50 caliber uppers, but they don't, they're not gas operated. They, they lock in, you know, like a AR 15, I guess, in the, into the, into the uh, barrel extension. And you, mm-hmm. you pull the trigger, you fire it, and then you, there's a handle on the side of it, and you rack it, unlock it, and cycle it. So the ATF, well, it, it, the, it, only- in a way, it's a lot like your bow. You know, you have a, uh, a PSE crossbow that just mounts to an AR lower. Um, it's a lot like that, you know, um, the only thing the AR lower is doing for this, uh, rifle or this upper, um, or I guess it is considered a rifle through new BATF standards, but, uh, I, it's a 50 caliber, so you're not using the magwell. So I'm assuming it's a single shot. That's um, a good point. It probably is and, a single shot. And, so the only thing you're using on the lower is the trigger. Well, I, I was going to go there. So here's the thing. So like on a bolt action rifle, like any standard bolt action, like you, if you own an FN SPR, an FN gun, bolt gun, the if you take the the barreled action out of the stock, that barreled action is the firearm, not the stock. Even, um, but in that, in that particular example, the trigger is part of the barreled action. However, and I'll I'll address that in a second. However, on this BA on this 50 caliber upper, they're if they're looking at it as an enclosed unit, it you know it's the it the the bolts in the up yeah the bolts in the upper, the carriers in the upper, the barrel extensions in the upper, and there's a bolt handle that's opening and closing this thing in the upper, and it, that sounds just like a bolt action rifle. Yep. Now, it doesn't have the trigger in it. However, people are like, well, it doesn't have the trigger and it. it doesn't count. My bolt, action, my bolt action rifles have triggers in them. Here's the problem. The SCAR 16 and 17 rifles that we have, we have 16, yep. and that SIG 55, 551A1, uh-huh. both of those guns, the upper is the serialized. Is the receiver, serialized part, yes. And the lower yeah. is just a... Like on a Scar Seven, on a Scar Sixteen, that lower part where you replace the trigger. That's why you can. Oh yeah, I, I took my my polymer lower off my Scar, and I went and got one of those magnesium lowers because somebody somewhere once thought there might be a chance that the lower would break, and I didn't have to. You know, well, there's no paperwork because it's well, and, that's, and that and that's also why on the Sig Five Five Six Xi you can change calibers, you know, to three hundred blackout, five five six, uh, seven six two by thirty nine, 
because the upper is the serialized part. You so just slap you, it on the lower. You slap on the lower and change the bull face, and you're – Boom, you're good. Um, There's probably so, more to it than that. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah like, but yeah. you, get the, you yeah. get the gist of it, you know. Um, but my point is um, walking down a slippery slope – you know, it's just one of those, man, I just hope we don't go into an area where uppers end up as guns. But, you know, it's a bold you know, action upper. I mean, look, I, I my personal feelings on this is it's not going to be that big of a deal because there's not that many people out there buying 50 caliber uppers, bold action uppers for their AR. Um and the truth is, now that they've reclassified it, all the people that were trying to import, I don't know what country they were importing it from, but all the people that are trying to import these uppers from whatever country, now it's a whole different import ball game now that they're classified as a firearm opposed to just an upper, well, appa- which is a part. Apparently, uh, my understanding is apparently the ATF has learned a lesson. And one of the lessons was, and it happened with the SIG brace, is they are trying not to issue open-ended letters anymore. So they they basically said the SIG brace is not a stock. But in, instead of saying it only applies to the SIG brace, it basically opened up to everything. So what they did in this case, this letter from the from from Martinsburg's the F, the ATF office in West Virginia that apparently only applies to uh, Walt is it Walter safe whatever this thing is from Safety Harbor Firearms in yeah. Florida and it's a let's see here a 50 BMG upper assembly. Uh, to, for determination of inter, inter, importability during the evaluation, FTISB, the, it's the, uh, the is it the firearms technical something branch something serve I don't know what it is determined that the 50 BMG upper assemblies incorporate a firearm quote receiver and therefore are classified as a firearm in and of themselves. As such, these 50 BMG upper assemblies must be marked in accordance with U.S. Code. 923 and follow all prescribed statutes or regulation regarding firearms. Um, but let's see here. Uh, then if, uh, the frame firearm frame or receiver. Here we go. Additionally, Title 27, whatever, 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 defines the term quote firearm frame or receiver unquote as the part of a firearm which provides housing for the hammer, bolt, or breech lock, breech block and firing mechanism and which is usually threaded at its forward position to receive the barrel. Think about this. That's interesting. So let's see that part of the firearm which provides the housing for the hammer, bolt, or breech lock. So it doesn't have a hammer in it, but it has a bolt and a breech lock. The firing mechanism, it doesn't have a firing mechanism in it. Or well no, well, what's the the firing mechanism? Is the firing well, it pin? Could be the firing pin. It's yeah. the firing pin, and yeah. which is usually threaded at its forward position to receive the barrel. Well, check this out. A the way an AR-15 is assembled, there's a barrel extension. Let me think about this. Uh, well, you know this well, better than me because I don't take AR-15s I, yeah, apart. Yeah, but see, I don't know how this is put together. It's a 50 caliber upper. Yeah. And see, I mean, so yeah. you know, we're not we're not talking about standard 223 crap here. I mean, I don't know how this thing's yeah. put together because I mean, it's 50 caliber. BMG, you know what? So. It could have a trunnion in it that receives I mean, the barrel I, thread, yeah, and then yeah. very there you go. That yeah. could be it. I mean, yeah, because I mean, you know, we're we're not we're not talking about you know something small here. You know what? Yeah. I bet you that's what's missing in this entire conversation. Nobody's talking about that. I think you're. Pro- I that's why you're the smarty around here when it comes to these the, putting stuff together. 
Yeah. So, because you know what? Yeah, we're not talking about an AR-15. We're talking about a 50 BMG. And, you know, if it's like an AR-15 upper, like this aluminum upper, that that upper can't con- can't contain all that pressure. It's got to oh, happen yeah. in the uh, in the barrel assembly, and that's not going to be a standard AR-15 barrel assembly. No, no, mm-hmm. not at all. Yeah, that's probably got like an extra part in it, like a tree. I mean, in. I mean, you know, you're talking about a 50 BMG, man. You're grabbing the tiger by the tail on that one. Oof. I don't even. <laughs> like, I don't even like to shoot that. Um, shoot that on, in semi-auto if I can avoid it. Dude, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I mean, there's no way in hell I would even want this. Could you imagine firing a 50 BMG on an AR platform? God almighty. Well, here's the thing. There's so many guns I'd rather have. If I had to have a single shot 50 BMG, 50 BMG gun, there's so many guns I would rather have. Like, I mean, there. I mean, Barrett, HS2000, or HS, whatever they are, there's all these companies that make decent bolt, you know, single shot 50s. And there's even like honestly, like there's some of those destructive devices, you know, for like training, you know, weapons crews where they put a uh, subcaliber 50 BMG system in it, and you fire the bazooka shot. And you know what I mean? Like I'd rather have something like that. If I have to have a single shot 50, I'd rather have like a, you know, a subcaliber anti tank weapon shooting a 50, just because uh-huh. I mean you're going to get you're going to get more more goofiness out of it you know i mean an ar is still an ar that thing's just going to suck anyway so you might as well just have it be cool you know what i mean yeah (laughs) i know yeah Yeah, i do i mean what would you rather have in the armory a subcaliber anti-tank weapon uh or a some crazy you know you know pakistani you know uh uh, what'd you call it like hillbilly uh um kyber pass single shot ar upper thing you know, I mean, it's like, I'd rather take the subcaliber. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. You know, I mean, you know, you, you have to, you know, you, you have to look at the big picture, you know. Um, and, man, honestly, ugh, I mean, you know, the thing just doesn't even remotely um, sound pleasant or fun to me. But with that being said, you know, it. it It is what it is, and um, people will people will go out of their way to get unique and unusual toys for their ARs, you know. And if you're a guy who's deep into the AR and you've got you know you know uh, 38 different ARs in different calibers, hey, why the hell not? Yeah, why the hell not? You know, if you're like the got to have your collection. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, hell, go for it. But, uh, man, but anyway, getting back to the BATF ruling, which is interesting because. I don't okay, know if it's so, an official ruling yet. I'm not. It's it's a. It, let me hold on. Let me see. What is this actually? What is the status of this? Uh, is this just a. Uh, it's a letter. So I, I, well, I guess it is the status of a letter in an individual case. So I don't know if it's it's not a gun law. It's a it's an interpretation of one particular device. But go ahead. Yeah. So it is just a letter. Okay. But if it goes through, then basically, if you buy this upper, you got to fill out a forty four seventy three and register. You know, and it's got to be. You know. Uh, because it, it, it's considered a firearm in itself, and then when you mate it to your AR lower, now you have a firearm that's that's actually a dual firearm. The lower is a firearm, uh, uh, 4473, under that serial number, and your upper is going to be a an upper classified as a firearm with its own serial number. So you will not have matching serial numbers. You will have a firearm that's a dual firearm with two serial numbers. Yeah, it's two firearms. It's not a... Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if dual firearm is the right term because dual would be like maybe one serial number for two for two actions, but it's a, you know, like a Bowforce kit or something. You know, the, oh, the Bowforce thing is a... It's a single serial number, but it's got four barrels on it. So, um, 
I don't know. It's it's interesting. It's a little it's a little concerning, but it is interesting. I mean, well, on the other side of the spectrum, did you hear what happened in California with the uh, Ninth Circuit and carrying guns? You didn't hear about that, did you? Uh, I don't know if I did. I I think I, I didn't. I just hear a pro gun Ninth Circuit ruling come down recently. Yes. Uh, do do do. Let me see here. The Ninth Circuit. Let me see here. Where is it? Because it's actually got some age on it because we haven't done. We've been so busy. Anyway, I guess the Ninth. Here we go. Ninth Circuit, which is basically, I think, Hawaii, California. And um, the Ninth Circuit is the one that's known for being like crazy, stupid liberal. Like they just, oh, they, yeah. you know, they're the ones that are always trying to say Trump doesn't have the authority to like set, you know, uh, immigration policy, which he clearly does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, ninth, the Liberal Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals endorsed the right of individuals to carry a farm in public in a ruling Tuesday, striking down a lower court argument that the Constitution only protects that right at home. Quote, analyzing the text of the Second Amendment and reviewing the relevant history, including founding era, era treaties, treatises uh, and 19th century case law, the panel stated that it was unpersuaded by the counties and states argument that the second amendment only has force within the home the case resulted from hawaii resident george young being denied twice in 2011 as he sought to carry a handgun two of the three judges who were both appointed by republican presidents ruled against a lower court upholding the restrictions well um See, you on one what? hand, two Republicans basically said yes, and the third said no, and guess what? The third's a lib. Yeah, of course. But on one hand, it seems like a no-brainer ruling, but it's the Ninth Circuit, so it's like, wow, shocker, you mm -hmm. know? Well, um, I think the Heller case really set the precedent for a lot of this. Yeah, but so what? It's the Ninth Circuit. Like, they give a shit about Heller. Or anything else. Yeah, you they know make what? their own crazy freaking rulings. It just how many? Yeah. How many rulings has the Ninth Circuit had overturned in the Supreme Court? I don't know the figure, but if you look it up, it's I high. guarantee you, it's a lot. I think it's the highest, most overturned circuit in the nation. Yes, yes, it is. Um, I mean, it, it's crazy because they don't give two shits about the Constitution. All they believe in is their liberal philosophy and and. It's like, well, this is our decision until it's overturned by the Supreme Court. This is the law of the land here. You know, it's it's crazy. Do you know what the what the slang the slang terms are for the Ninth Circuit are in the street in legal circles? I have no clue. The nutty ninth and the, the ninth nutty. and the ninth circus. Yeah. And the only reason this the only reason that this this I think even happened is it just so happened on this appellate so like federal courts you go to a federal judge as i recall because i've been in federal court federal judge you can appeal to a three judge panel and then you can request an on and bank hearing you can request an appeal to the entire court and then from there you can go up to the supreme court so this isn't done so in this one case there happen to be two republican appointed judges on this three judge panel for the appellate and just so happened two of them got on there and it it you know it 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 went the way it went and we'll see if this stands up to the uh, to an on bank appeal in the ninth circuit and for anyone listening at home doesn't realize how crazy this is the ninth circuit the not the the u.s federal court ninth circuit is based in san francisco it sits there of all places they were this yeah. real think about how, how how that's like that's crazy I mean, just, yeah. I mean, it's the Ninth Circus. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. That was, you know, kind of some good news. You know, that's that's an example of where, you know, where voting for Donald Trump in the future will pay off. Because I doubt these two judges were appointed by Trump. I mean, maybe they were, but I would, I would, I would I, doubt it. I, I'm not going to say, I don't think they were, but I can't say with 100% certainty or not, but... Um, I don't think they're Trump appointees. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Trump, did have you heard about what's going on at the uh, the star the his uh, was it Hollywood star? 
the walk Man, of fame. isn't that crazy as hell? You know, look, like George Lopez fake peeing on it, and then I guess people have been tearing it up, and they're getting arrested. But um, um, I saw one a couple days ago. Dude, I got to admit, I thought it was funny as shit. So they got so, you know, it lives. So, you know, it's Hollywood, and they're all the movie yeah. industry out there. So you would have loved this. So a couple of these guys, what they did is they got, like, full, like, commie soldier outfits. <laughs> and, they and like, two of them are, like, the big old, like, you know, the big old long coat and, you know, like, the fur hats and whatever. Yeah, and yeah, they, yeah, And they, yeah. they showed up at Trump's star to, quote, protect it from vandals. So basically, like, the Russians are here to protect Trump's star. And okay, that's that that's actually damn funny. That's damn funny. And I yeah, even is. I publicly was like, <laughs> look, I support Trump and I think you guys are all jackasses, but funny's funny and witty's witty, especially yeah. if you're not hurting anybody. And that was yeah. pretty good. I thought Yeah, that, was, that, that that that's actually yeah, you great. get a gold star for that. I'm not I'm not yeah. gonna be so politically correct or so blind in my in, in oh, you know, in I my mean, political persuasions that I can't look at the other side and go, Okay, that was fucking funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, some people get so wrapped up and it's just like, you know, they're not going to they, – deep down they know it's funny, but, well, no, we're not going to laugh at that and say it. And it's like, come on, man, funny's funny. Funny is funny. You know? I mean, man, I, I mean, I, I look at shit all the time. I don't necessarily politically agree with it, but it's like, okay, that was pretty damn funny and witty. You yeah, know? Yeah, I mean, you got to like that. That was awesome. So, and since we're on Trump, I got to do this. I sent this to you last night. I saw this before I went to bed, and I was like, bitch, really? LeBron James comes out and says, you know, <laughs> let me say it, Donald Trump, LeBron James has come out and said, Donald Trump is using sports to divide America. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I read that, and it's like, really? I mean, just – Totally disregarding the the bullshit that's been going on for the past two years with the uh, football players and kneeling, but yeah, it's it Trump Trump's using this to divide America. It's like stop it. Where's my squirt gun filled with water? I need to squirt LeBron James in the face and say stop. <laughs> Treat him like a little fucking puppy. Oh my! It's like stop. Oh it's yeah. Like, I mean, look, I mean, I understand LeBron James is not a Rhodes Scholar. I understand he got through college on a foot on a, uh, a basketball scholarship. I understand he's not the brightest star in the sky. I understand his IQ is not really on the on the upper end of the IQ range. I honestly but, don't know but, if he's smart. I don't know anything about him. At the end of the day, he's not a Downs baby either. He's not <laughs> totally fucking stupid. But when you listen to comments like that, you have to wonder how many chromosomes the guy actually has. It's it's willful ignorance on the left because, oh you, ah. dude, they always do this. This is how this is literally how Democrats and liberals operate. They do shit. It gets fucked up because it was not a good idea to begin with, and then they start campaigning against the fucked upness. I mean, it's like, think about it, like, you know, the the welfare state. It's all fucked up. Oh, the welfare state sucks. We got to fucking fix this. It's fucking, you know, like it's my fault, you know. Oh, uh, sports is being used for political stuff, and Donald Trump, fuck you. And it's like, you assholes did this bullshit. And the <laughs> only reason you're saying that, you know, look, here's the thing. If Donald Trump wasn't winning and the NFL wasn't losing, LeBron James would not be on media deliberately trying to spin this as Donald Trump is is fucking up America using sports to divide us. He would be saying the opposite. He would say athletes are leading the way in for social change because that's what they wanted yeah. to have happen. But instead, the NFL is going to go like NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And see, everybody yeah. sees this coming. The NFL's in tr the NFL's going to get a lot look, smaller if they're not careful. Look, the the NFL has lost a butt ton of fans. They've lost a butt ton of money, and 
you know, okay, in in 16, they were saying, well, you know, our viewership's always down on election years because everyone's watching the political blah, blah, blah. But at this point in time, we're running into the 2018 football season, and they're running out of excuses why people aren't watching football. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the contract negotiations are coming up, too, because when the uh, the networks – spend big money with the NFL to broadcast these games. They do a multi-year contract, but those contracts aren't going to last forever, and they expect to be able to sell advertising against that, and the, sh- the numbers aren't matching up. And they're going to fuck this up. They're going to fuck up the NFL. This is this is, this is is the NFL. Look, the NFL's not going away, but the NFL's going to get a lot goddamn smaller. And the reason this is happening, the reason this is happening is because was it who's the guy that owns the the Dallas Cowboys? Is it Jerry I, Jones? I, I have no. Clue. I think it's Jerry Jones. The only reason I know who he is is because he's been around forever. But he's come out and said the Dallas Cowboys. He said if you, you're going to play at the Cowboys, um, you're going to stand for the national anthem, or you're not going to play here. And mm-hmm. you know, because in Texas they ain't going to put up with that bullshit. And he'll fucking kick them off. And kind of like Marge shot. Well, apparently, apparently the NFL's told Jerry Jones to shut the fuck up because here's the problem: they know good, good goddamn and well, come start a football season, that a bunch of these assholes are going to take a fucking knee, and it's the shit's going to start all over again. And here's the thing: there's one who's it? There's one guy. He's a he's a. Uh, I saw it in the news. Like I don't know who any of these people are. He's a black guy. Seemed very articulate, very nice. Uh, I think he was a, I think he was a quarterback, and he I think he might even played for the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know who the man is, but he came out and he's like, "I will not be taking a knee. I you know I believe in this country, and I don't think we should be disrespecting people and disrespecting the flag, especially when someone's coming to a sporting event." And he said all the right things because you know maybe he believes it or maybe he's a good businessman. Doesn't matter. But it's interesting how the NFL isn't really eager to support him because what's going to happen is I think the NFL is going to lose about 30% of its players because these assholes think they're irreplaceable. Yeah. Well, um, remember when they tell. Were, do you remember the NFL strike and they locked all those assholes out and they had the fucking, and they had all these guys come in playing? The scabs, they called them. Uh-huh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now they were like, oh, fuck, we, you can't do that. Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, look, here this is the truth about the NFL. All the guys that are playing in the NFL are highly talented football players. But just like any other major sport, for every one person that makes it to the NFL, there's a thousand equally talented guys out there that can do as good a job or better, but they never had the chance. So don't think you're not so replaceable because if you start scouring the streets, you just may find someone that can do your job better than you. Oh, it's market dynamics. If you get a bunch of guys that are not in the league right now or they're playing on the practice teams, and again, I'm not a big NFL guy. I mean, I don't know that much about it. And all of a sudden, 30% of the NFL players are banned or, you know, no longer in the game for whatever this happens. Do you think these players are going to be – there's going to be some, I'm, I'm going to stand in solidarity with, you know, my communist friends in the NFL. Well, I don't even – like, they got their contract, but I didn't get any money because I'm on the street. I don't have a job. It would be like, this is my fucking chance. I can go out there, play my fucking heart all out, and maybe get a chance to stay – when all this shit settles down and maybe I can, maybe I can actually have a career and get the league minimums and they will fill yeah. those fucking slots. Ricky tick. And here's something yep. else. Here's something else. It's, I think this is, and I think a lot of people are really, I think the F look, the NFL is not dumb. Uh, Goodell's not dumb. Um, I mean, I'll tell you something about his wife in a minute, but, um, Goodell's, he knows what the fuck's going on, but, uh, there's, it's entirely <laughs> possible that the NFL within two or three years could very easily be the following. Think about this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you know, these ga- you know these teams aren't going to, you know, you, you can't get rid of the NFL. You can't do this. You can't do that. Well, okay. Well, the market's going to be the market. And maybe it'll be the Dallas Cowboys. 
Maybe it'll be the New England Patriots. Maybe it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't know. But if the NFL turns into a giant anti-American shithole, one of these teams is basically going to stand tall and they're going to say, we're America's team. We're putting a flag on everything. And what's going to happen is it's going to be the it's going to be all the people that are God loving, American loving um, uh, uh, patriots will basically support that team as they play every other goddamn team in the league. And it'll basically be it'll be, you know, I don't know how many teams are in the NFL, 31 teams versus one. And that's what it'll really be. And that will fuck the shit. Uh, that'll fuck up the marketing like nobody's business. Because the only games that anyone's gonna want to gonna watch is gonna be the ones with the American, with the team that's got yeah. the American flag on their fucking shoulder. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna watch America's team. No other teams will get viewership. Uh, well, a, a viewership mm-hmm. that matters. Yeah, because one and, t- one team will then, basically say, "Wait a minute, are you telling me that I could I could have a bunch of people in Oregon and Texas and Florida buy Cincinnati Bengals jerseys if we come out as pro American? Sign me up, even if you don't believe it. That's what's going to happen. Well, and then all your sponsorships are going to go to that team because that's the only team people are watching." Mm-hmm. And money talks, bullshit walks. And all these little baby millionaires, I guess they think they're self-important, but the only person that's important in the NFL are the sponsors. I love that. Baby yeah. millionaires. Dude, that is it right there, buddy. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's true, because if it wasn't for the sponsors, these guys wouldn't be paid enough to buy a cup of coffee and a cookie. Yep. Yep, it's just a game. And, you know, that's, again, because... It does. I don't care who you are. I mean, if you're Glock, or if you're the NFL, or if you're the if you're if you're the um, if you're the uh, uh, you know intelligence community in government, if you think you're so special that you're irreplaceable, guess what? It's time you be replaced. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's absolutely. That's the worst. That's the worst thing. People that think, don't you know who I am? That's the worst fucking thing to come out of your mouth. It's like, oh, 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 oh we do now, motherfucker. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, this NFL shit pisses me off, and I am not a football person. I don't. I don't care. I mean, uh, no, I'm. I'm not a football person. I mean, I don't care about football. I mean, I watched. I mean, look, my my. My football viewership has been zero the past couple of years. But prior to that, I watched, I don't know, maybe three or four games a year. I mean, you know, I watched the Super Bowl. Um, I'd watch, uh, you know, a couple local teams or if people were over the house on a Sunday watching football, you know, I'd watch them. Uh, of course, during hunting season, you know, uh, you know, uh, obviously, uh, you know, when we're on, uh, our hunting trip, you know, uh, watching the Ohio State game is just kind of a must. Yeah, yeah. You know, but hey, that's, that's not, college. But, but that's college. Uh-huh. That's not the NFL. But usually a few NFL games will follow that, you know, mm-hmm. and I'll watch. But honestly, I'm not a football fan. So mm-hmm. whether whether football, you know, just goes away or whether it stays, I couldn't give two shits about it because I don't mm-hmm. watch football. And that's not to say I hate football. It's just not my mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, people will you drop know? people will drop the NFL and they'll start watching. They'll be super fans of their own local team where their sons and their daughters and their grandkids and their neighbors go to school and actually where their kids, you know, get a chance to do something and be on TV and, you know, get an education, hopefully, you would hope. And, you know, it's not shit on America time. And I, I, I mean, I just think I, I'm telling you, I think the NFL needs to be kicked in the dick. I just they this is not over. And, you know, just from a, it's such bad business the way they've handled this. Oh, know, man. If they, they, yeah, if they, they just they, yeah, if they just they, manned up and just fucking nip this in the bud when it first started they wouldn't this this drama is going to drag out for four or six years and it's well, going to fucking kill them if if they would have nipped this in the bud they wouldn't have lost probably a couple hundred million dollars over the past couple of years mm-hmm. the truth is this is just residual fallout from the obama administration mm-hmm. where it was okay 
to do anything you wanted. And if you shit on America and anyone said you were a dick for shitting on America, that person was wrong. Well, remember this. They're in a, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they decided they weren't going to come out and come out onto the field. And which is, you know, still, I mean, that's not the right thing to do. And so the whole team decided to sit out. Well, the one guy came out and put his hand over his heart. And he stood yeah. there, and you know what ended up happening to that guy? He went back into the locker room at some point, and they all basically let him have it. And he had to come out like a hostage fucking video and basically issue apology for being a West Point graduate and holding his hand over his heart. And as far as I'm concerned, Pittsburgh, you can fucking fall off the face of the earth. You're at the bottom of my fucking list. I mean, fuck you. I mean, yeah. what the fuck's wrong with you guys? And if you're living in Pittsburgh and you're listening to this and you don't like it, it's not my problem. Your problem is down there, goddamn Three River Stadium. And the fact that I even know it's called Three River Stadium when I'm not even a football fan is a clue that you have a major fucking problem here. Because all these guys like me that don't even care about the NFL, every beginning every fucking football season we go, they take a knee or they fucking stand. Now we're paying attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is going to yeah. get worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, even though the NFL has come out with these guidelines on it, it, it the interesting thing is, is, guidelines. is, yeah, exactly. Guidelines. Do you know what guidelines really is? It's a lack of leadership. You know yeah. what? You know what a guideline is? I'm the boss. Do it my way or you're fired. That's yeah. that's fuck. That's how you do it. Yeah. You don't like it. That's fine. Go work someplace else. Want to, you want to start your own league? Want to start your own team? Do what you got to do. Look, all all the NFL has to do if is P. Say, Diddy wants to buy the Carolina Panthers and start the fucking crazy Black Panther Hate America football team, go right ahead. Let's see how that plays out. But that would be better than what we have now. It would be. But look, all the NFL has to do. It's very simple. All the NFL has to do is sack up and say, "This is the rule." You will come out on the field. You will stand for the national anthem. You will not kneel. You know, um, you won't raise your fist. You will stand there respectfully for the national anthem. And if you do not do that, you will be escorted off the field by security, and you will not get to play, and you will be fined, uh, I don't know, $100,000. Now, that might not be that big of a deal, to the guy who makes, you know, $5 million a year or $10 million a year, but you won't get to play. I think the league minimum is 600000 and a lot, there's a lot more $600,000 players in the NFL okay. than there are $6 million. Okay, well, guess what? Um, uh, if you're making $600,000 a year and you play 16 games, you're out of fucking money. You didn't get paid that year if you kneel for more than six games, mm -hmm. you know? So um, the bottom line is um, you force them to stand respectfully. Um, obviously, the majority of the people in this country disagree with these athletes kneeling. That's obvious in the results. It's obvious in the loss of revenue from the NFL. It's obvious when you look at the people that are protesting the NFL. The vast majority of the people do not fucking like it so the nfl needs to sack the fuck up and basically put a stop to it and make the punishment so extreme that the baby millionaires have to comply or they can get the fuck out of the game or i have a, i have another solution here's here's the ultimate problem with this entire endeavor okay look if i was an nfl football player and i felt strongly about something whatever it is, and I wanted to protest. I'm going to protest. You can't stop me. But what I really like and what most people don't like is don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. And don't – here's the thing. The guys can protest on the field, but you know what? There's consequences to everything. If you believe in it that strongly, you're going to, you're, don't be surprised if you end up in the parking lot. But what we don't like 
is they get to do whatever the fuck they want, and we don't get to fucking have a say as how we react to it because, well, that's just wrong. You can't – You how dare you criticize the NFL? How dare you boycott games? How dare you demand that they fire people? Or how dare there be consequences for the actions that individuals take upon themselves? It's like, no, there should be – you know, if you believe in it, I respect that. If Colin Kaepernick, Pumpernickel – once the <laughs> once the you know get drummed out of the NFL I have here's the and here's the thing and this is I'm this is straight up I have more respect for Pumpernickel than I do for all these guys who like the, the fucking Pittsburgh Steelers the guy comes out because he wants to fucking stand tall before the flag but then they get him in private and basically fucking code red his ass it's like well, no, fuck you. At least Kaepernick is man enough to stand up and take the consequences of his fucking actions. Guess what? He's out of the fucking football league. Yeah. Tough titties. And it's just, I hate, you know, I hate the fact that they're trying to say that the other side of this, people can't react to it. There can be no consequences to it. They get, you know, if you hate America, but, you can do whatever you want. But if you love America, you better not say anything. Uh, again, that just rotates back to the whole um, the the residual fallout from the Obama administration, where where it was okay to protest everything, but not okay to to counter protest everything. Yep. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the way it was through the whole eight freaking years of Obama. That's that, why Black Lives Matter rose to, uh, you know, to the to the peak. That's, that's why Ferguson was destroyed twice. Mm-hmm. Well, that's how that's why Donald Trump ended up being elected president, because people were like, oh, really? You're going to tell me all the shit that isn't true? Watch this. Donald Trump's you know, Donald, Donald Trump can't win. This is going to happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not going to code red. You're not going to code red my ass when I pull those curtains closed and I fucking punch Donald Trump on that goddamn ticket and send a madman to Washington. And let's be, you know, I mean, let's be real. You know, it's like, you know, Donald Trump isn't, you know, Donald Trump is a big middle finger to fucking all these goddamn assholes. Yeah. Let me, you know what? Let me tell you. A fun <laughs> Donald, story. Donald Trump is the culmination of a lot of years of PC. Um, uh, PC society. Do you? I want to. I want to. I'm going to finish my this NFL story because I kind of know more trade industry people than I do like sports. Do you remember a girl that used to work? Eh, woman. Um, the older I get, they the more girls, more the more women become girls. Um, do you remember a girl that used to work at Fox News named ja- uh, Jamie Skinner? Shepard no, Smith. No, Shep- no. Shepherd Smith used to call her Skins all the time. Do you remember her? No, okay. no, I don't remember her at it's all. J- Jane, maybe it's Jane Skinner. Jane Skinner. Yeah, no, Skinner. it doesn't ring a bell. She was a reporter. She's an on-air talent. She was on-air talent for Fox News for a long time, daytime, and so she did a lot of hits with um, Shepard Smith, and they had a good rapport. And if you ever seen Shepard Smith because he's on during the day, you've seen Jane Skinner. She was on for a long time. You'd recognize her face. He'd, he'd call her Skins. She married the current commissioner of uh, the NFL, uh, Goodell. Is that his name? Roger Goodell. They live. They live in Manhattan. Um, okay. Pretty certain. Well, this is this is how not dumb Roger Goodell is. He knows what the fuck's going on here, and this is this is a leadership problem. Jane Skinner. This is before the protest stuff started. But, you know, Goodell was getting in trouble for, you know, all these criminals in the NFL and all these issues with peds and all these issues with dope and all these issues with violence. And then there's issues with, like, you know, football teams cheating to beat other teams. You know, all, well, you know if you're an NFL person, you yeah. do this a lot better. I'm, I'm literally glossing over it. So anyway, yeah. at the end of the day, it always ends up going to, you know, it's his fault. Well, Jane Skinner, his wife, she created bogus social media accounts. And she would go around and she would find where, like, the most vehement people that were criticizing the commissioner of the NFL. And she would roll in there as supposedly a disinterested third party and try to quell these things really uh, using some insider information and you know her perspectives because she was trying to protect her husband which in a, on a, on one level i guess is noble 
but on another level, it's like, you know, she got someone eventually did an. She would this this account would would say things and respond to things and say things so quickly and and so thoroughly and seem to have a lot of information that people eventually started running down the IP address. Surprise! It's literally coming out of Roger Goodell's house, his computer, <laughs> and they're not even sure. I I mean, they're not officially sure. If he even knew his wife was doing it, so, I know. For all we know, it could have been him doing it himself. He threw his wife under the bus. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, you know what? That if that isn't the ultimate description of the NFL, you know what? If uh, if um, uh, next year, if all the NFL players take a knee and the business is over and nobody wants to advertise at the NFL any, anymore, Roger Delk, he comes home, he slaps his wife in the face and says, this is your fault. Get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Blames her for it. Sure. Why not? Yeah. So that was a funny thing. Hey, um, do you want to talk about the, uh, the auction that we snarfed up the, the gun we couldn't believe we snarfed up. We uh, have sure. it. Do yeah. you remember? Do you remember the rifle? Can you pronounce it? Uh, no, I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> do you remember the? Uh, do you remember the, the? Remember the rifle we got from Scott Mayer, the Hakeem? Yeah. It's then we have so many goddamn guns. The so you know the Hakeem is a. Made made in um, Egypt, and yeah. it was built on sweet Swedish tooling for yeah. young men rifles. And yeah. the original young men AG forty two B is a six five Swede version of that Hakim, and they've skyrocketed in price. We we got one. That's okay. the that's the thing we stole from an auction house. Nice. And uh, it's it it dude. I don't. I was looking at the barrel. I don't think it's been fired. Really? I think Not they. Yet. I think it's been rebuilt, and um, it's uh, it it's. I don't think the previous owner ever fired it. Nice. Came out of an estate, and uh, I think this dude bought this gun and uh, just put it up. Maybe he was a collector. Well, shit, how many guns do we have in the armory that we've never fired? Oh, uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Glass houses. <laughs> um, <laughs> holy shit. Um, yeah. Dude, we, we, we could make videos for two years straight on guns that people have never seen. Um, but I want you to take a look at this. But um, it's, uh, it's actually, it's not even on a shelf. It's actually in my office. It's behind me. And... Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's got new arsenal wood. Here, hold on, let me get it. It's got new arsenal wood on it. So it's like, you know, there, I guess there was an official at one point, a young man that came out earlier than this, and then they decided to do some upgrades. And um, it might be missing a, uh, a little bumper pad for like a brass deflector, like a r hard rubber part. But um, like this thing, it's been, it looks factory, factory fresh, Arsenal refinished. I mean, it looks like, uh -huh. it looks like one of the, remember the, remember when all those French guns came into the country that had been Arsenal refinished and put up? Yeah. It looked, it literally looks like it just came out of the wrapping. Huh. I mean, really? it's, 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 let's see here if I can get it up. Let me look at the brief face. Yeah, that the. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. This. Uh, this this dude hadn't fired this gun. Nice. I mean, it's got. It's it's pretty it's pretty good shape. So, um, we uh. I ha I haven't officially declared the six hundred yard range open yet on the new rifle range. But I have shot it to 550. Yeah. Um, we have some. We have some targets up. I have targets up in the. Um, in a, I guess what we were calling finger two. I have a target in the middle of that trench in finger two. Yeah. And then I have a target. Uh, below the crest of finger three, when you and I were standing there talking to the bulldozer guy. So yeah. when we were standing was about 600 yards. I yeah. have a target about 50 yards in front of that. 
on the hill face because I didn't want to send a bullet over the top of that hill, even though it would go into the hill behind it because the hill behind it's even taller. It's just not the way I want to. I want to run. I want to run the range. Yeah. So we could. We have some six five sweet ammo in the armory. We could. Um, actually, we have some eight millimeter as well. We could take out the Hakeem and the young men, and uh, you know, break them in a little bit. Maybe make a video. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That sounds. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. So. Um, once you get the, uh, Bernadelli cleaned up, cause it is a wreck. Well, um, I'm going out of town here, uh, tomorrow. So, oh, shit, uh, I get it to me one day next week and I'll break it down and clean it up. Okay. Um, oh, uh, we picked up a, a hell wand too. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. And you know, the Walther P1. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What what else is there? Uh, um, the uh, I don't know what else was there. Uh, the twelve oh one, yeah. I mean, there's it's just crazy. So yeah. All right, well, we've been going long here. So I mean, unless there's anything else you want to. Um, oh, the Walther P one has six magazines, not five mags. Um, <laughs> they sold it to us with five, but they forgot to count the one in the gun. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. I was like, holy shit, there's six mags here. Um, uh, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. I'll I take mean, it. You know, I'll, uh, hell yeah, I'll take it. How many P1s, <laughs> how many P1s, because this came up on Facebook, how many P1s have you owned in your life? Walter uh, P38s? Uh, I've owned uh, I, I don't know, six or seven P38s over the years. Yeah. I haven't touched um, one in years. Um, most of them, you know, were, uh, Nazi guns. you know, Nazi mark. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't, this isn't, uh, this isn't a Nazi gun. You know, I don't, I mean, I, you know. No, for, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, that, that's fine. Yeah. For reference guns, why pay the price? No, exactly. Yeah. You know, um, this is, this is more than, more than adequate. So you know, it'll it'll definitely get the job done and it's a nice reference piece to have. So, so when you get back from your trip and we get some time with your work schedule, you want to maybe start doing some uh horsing around uh that we talked about on the uh on the farm, on the range. Uh I gotta absolutely. stop calling that a farm because it ain't a farm no more. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 far from a farm. <laughs> it's a big giant mud pit. <laughs> so yeah. with a yeah. uh, with a mile of trails in it. Um so yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. We can, you know, we can shoot some rifles or if you want to do some handguns and uh do that series, the horsing around. Uh we can you can start up if it's here's the thing, if you're listening to this podcast and you hear us talking about the horsing around thing, you're like, What the fuck they're talking about? It's a video series that we're planning on starting and you get a preview. You heard it here first. Um, so if you don't listen to the but we'll, we'll we'll pay attention to the social media and the people that reference the the horse and around will know they listen to the podcast so because <laughs> exactly. uh, it'll it'll it's on it'll be in the podcast weeks before it shows up in video series so yeah all right was any anything else we need to bring up or talk about or uh yeah i think i think you know we're uh we're pretty much up to date on most things i guess okay um uh yeah no i can't really think of anything well, you know, I mean, how does it feel to be famous? You know, are you have any words now that you've now come out with your own video on John nineteen eleven talking about your uh, your shotguns? Yeah, not really. Have you has TMZ showed up outside your house? You feel comfortable? You know, now people going to recognize who you are. Um, nah, people recognize me all the time. Yeah, they only recognize my chin. <laughs> all right well this wraps up episode 103 193 of the john 1911 podcast i'm leaving that in if you want to see uh see some pictures or references the things we talked about on the podcast go to our website john 1911.com uh, it'll be in the comments it's j-o-h-n remember it's all about shooting guns and having fun everybody have a good day see you later